Hello, I'm Mark Baer, you're watching The Your Town Show. My guest, Paul Seftel, artist, and we're talking about a very large scale art project with a book called Post Truth. So, Hi. welcome. Thank you very much. How so, I was in your studio the other day and I saw the prints blown up big, framed beautifully, designed beautifully, super impactful mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm imagining the whole piece on a gallery wall. So they're four foot by six foot prints, some of them, yeah, so and uh, three foot by uh, four foot as well. And uh, they, more importantly, they're stamps, they're old canceled American postage stamps and each stamp is a story within itself. Let's start with how, how this all came about. Well, long story short, there's a hell of a lot of discarded old postage stamps out there. Like what it means to, you know, post a message has completely changed. And in this kind of the 21st century archive of time, all of our past is unearthed. So I was given this huge collection of postage stamps from a, a collector who's, uh, who had passed and his family had this giant collection of postage stamps and I was fascinated by the ones which had been cancelled and they'd been kept and wrapped in little bundles of 50s uh, but there would be thousands of exactly the same postage stamp all bundled into little piles of 50s and these were currencies, spent currencies with the only value really a sense of perceived value, um, the worth of collecting stamps and what I found when looking into this was that there was so much history, American history and propaganda and uh, unintended humor. Unintended irony. Yeah, that was just wrapped up in all these little bundles and I just, it was, too, it was something too large which captured and was participated in by so many thousands of people across so many decades that I felt like it was a real opportunity to also find, have that sense of a treasure hunt, of finding the one in the million, you know, that like inverted Jenny, um, multi-million dollar postage stamp, you know, hidden in the midst. Yeah. And so what could make a generic cancelled stamp from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, like somehow of greater value? Like they were all the same, but the cancellations marks on their faces had unintended paradoxes and ironies of, you know, um, it, statements which you would otherwise completely miss because these are one inch squares of old handmade paper with old ink types and the printing processes and engraving processes were all so entirely different from the way things are uh, operating now. So I found within a hundred thousand stamps that I pasted and stuck onto canvases and incorporated into. So you really worked with this before the big pieces came. Yeah. 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 And then out of these special moments, these like forgotten memories and uh, just unintended ironies, I pulled out about 40 images. Um, 40 stories, these postage stamps, these tiniest forms of propaganda which had been sent through the mail over a century um, and you were receiving a message through on mail. That was the earliest form of government messaging. And so then the message removed from the envelope left a partial message and you know there was um, a lot of statements like pray for peace and save water and fight your insect enemies. Um, things which you just were almost like alien, otherworldly, yet it captured for me my grandparents' generation. Yeah, and, real and Americana. Yeah, the America that was like the hopes and dreams from the 20th that century. That we yearn for that connection. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and then what I started to see was, well, where does this come from? Where does our GM modified food that we have now come from? And I would start to see how the public messaging about spraying 
uh, crops and using chemicals started to come in. Even, you know, it started to come in very early in the late 1800s. But by the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s, it was, you know, it was a big push to feed the world by spraying everything with noxious chemicals. <laughs> and you see the consequences. So I'm going to go back for a second. So I'm, when I walked in, you know, I, I, I've seen a few pieces. I'm imagining the 40 pieces together. So the, the size of the show will be 40 pieces when it's all laid out in a well, space in the, at once. In the story, you know, is infinite. And yeah. I've collected, you know, 40 pieces which I found of interest, which can be blown up to billboard size. Um, and my, I think the story is equally powerful in three, four, half a dozen, yeah. um, even in one or two, when, if you have a connection with that moment in time and how that moment speaks to you now. So I, I mean, I, I, I'm blown away by a couple of things. I'm blown away, A, by the interestingness of it, because I, I, I love Americana. And, it's and, dangerous, I, and I love this. You know, it's a, it's a mm. touchstone of who we are. Mm. You know, we, 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 we lose that connection in the immediacy of, of life. We, we lose our, right. our, our history and our American root history, and it's really in us. And then I like the way they looked in a, you know, as I, as I saw them in, in, in your studio, it was, had a very beautiful kind of design because you, you 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 did all the edges, uh, you scalloped all the edges. So so as as just beautiful design and blown up as as you putting the, making your own stamp art pieces out of them, they had uh, the design was beautiful, the color was beautiful, mm. um, which which is mm. your Close. stamp. Yeah. Uh, the um, it, it had a very kind of pop feeling, but not pop servicing. So it wasn't pop, it had a pop, it had a pop look, but with a deeper, you know, but not surface, but with a deeper story. Yeah, I mean, I like the style of, you know, Americana and people automatically react to that. I mean, I, I feel like from Jasper John's flag onwards, yeah. people just respond to imagery and iconography and it to me is an essential it's essentially a form of propaganda and the stamps too are you know when you see money yeah blown up huge <laughs> people are drawn to it yeah because it's you know? beautiful first yeah. of all it's beautiful and it also is a universal part of right. us right and you get to see this magnified and something else kind of come out of it um, and the way that I created it in just large format, beautiful kind of renditions from kind of the light of time capturing in close up even the fibers of the paper of the stamps and then blowing that up to a massive scale compared to a one inch postage stamp um, and just floating it as simply and as easily as possible uh, in an elegant frame just to make so the frame disappeared and uh, this giant floating piece of memory yeah it's exactly yeah, yeah. It, it's very redolent and then so this is a, um, you know this is a, a, a large-scale project over many years yeah it's and, it, and it's, it's kept very... your attention over the many years because you know every, we, we all embark on projects that don't get to their fruition, and, and, and this one is. Well, uh, I think of it as more of a messenger in a line, I mean, from all the people who collected the stamps, yeah. and then how they were kept and stored and gathered, and then passed on to me. And um, I felt some kind of need to do it in the same way that I think most people on the planet, at least in the past, at one point or another, collected a stamp. Yeah, but and, and to collect one stamp, to look at a stamp and think about removing it from an envelope, makes one a collector. And in then the history of collecting, right, actually comes from stamp collecting, possibly for the intrigue, the beauty, 
the wonder, the like the storing co capability. And then a collector thinks, well, I want to have all of these stamps to have this whole collection, this whole series. And then they think, oh, I want to have the whole next series, a next series, a next series. And so maybe I just got infected by the collecting bug. But, but I get, you know, the difference is, is uh, as the artist coming to this, you know, a, a collector may be looking for the valuable one that's going to give him the big payoff, and, and the, the rarer mm -hmm. is, is the is the is the one of value to where you're you're as the artist you're seeing it in terms of a story. Yeah, the, 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 the story is coming across. But to you. it's still gem mining because you're still yeah. like mining this vast body of collections for something rare. You know, within millions uh -huh. of certain stamps which were produced and sent, there may be one or two that I find that have some almost otherworldly kind of message for me. Now, that's me reading into things of course. and looking at the connection of words with one another. So they become um, gazing balls of sorts that you reflect upon these partial words and letters and their, the way they coincide with the, the meaning of the stamp. And the book, I put together the story with thinking points. And it's very snarky. And um, it's another take on the American dream, looking at more at like, oh, our American dream is lost, and this is where it got lost along the way. And so as an art project, obsession, story, I think, <clears throat> I was also inspired by Roosevelt, who made a lot of the incredible stamps telling American stories. Um, designed them himself, actually. And, and so a lot of American stamp history is so rich because of his input. But from him, it came to him as a young child who started collecting stamps. And then later through his life, he kept collecting stamps because he found it as a tool to ward off depression. And I found that very interesting because through very dark periods of our recent history, uh, my feelings politically and emotionally with the world, actually focusing on, the, on these tiny details has been a real medicine for me. So the organizing of the stamps and the observing and looking into it and finding the stories um, has, has given me another sense of America, um, its origins and, and what it means to it means, means to us collectively. Civilized, it, it, it's, you know, stamp collecting seems so civilized and genteel and kind of... I think it's just, pure just, madness. Just. Then from that, as art, there have been so many different movements which have used uh, mail as an, an art form and means. Um, so mail art and stamp art and, uh, you know, there have even been programs where artists have sent themselves, sent each other different artworks through the mail over long periods. And there have been some great proponents and collage in that movement. And I mean, even Andy Warhol took um, postage stamps and made screen prints of them. There's actually one piece which um, of mine which uses a seven cent B-52 bomber from 1958 and 1960. And they're these really iconic red and blue Stamps with an airplane and a, a futurist number Seems seven. Seems very James Rosenquist. Right, but Andy Warhol yeah. took this and made large screen prints of it. Yeah. Now, in one painting, I have two thousand of that actual stamp, which has been cancelled and sent, and is represents all of these planes colliding in this red and blue field, um, and seven 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 is burned into the center in. Uh, in oxidized metals and minerals. And it's a seven cent stamp, but it was also capturing um, the sense of, of uh, the jackpot, the American dream, the mirage of, uh, of what, uh, what these colliding forces of red and blue and this explosion of planes and bombers. Um, and, uh, you know, the the idea of what is really the... And then uh, let's, let's talk about how you, you kind of got onto the cancellations too. Because you got onto the... the it was like sometimes contradictory messaging. Mm. You know, 
which I, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, if one of the first ones that I found, which stopped me in my tracks, was um, it was a stamp from 1959, and it was commemorating the centenary of the petroleum industry, right? So 1959, 100 years of the petroleum industry, a, a picture of an oil derrick on the stamp. And I found this in 2009 during at the very beginning of the, uh, the war on oil, blood for oil that uh, people were so angry about. Um, and on top of this stamp, commemorating the petroleum industry, uh, it said, pray for peace. And so it's, you know, 150 years commemorating. So, you know, so, so what you yeah. get is the whole contradictory nature of the American experience. Right, you know, exactly. so it, it's, the, it's the propaganda, the anti-propaganda, the whole, thing all the many laid voices. out yeah. for us yeah exactly and you know then I started to find I found a New Mexico statehood stamp and on top of Shiprock there on the Navajo reservation um, considered a, a sacred rock they don't like people climbing it it's a it's a really special place it was stamped cathedral and you know it made me think of the old Shakespeare line from King Lear it's like the earth is my goddess Right? or a sense of early religions and how the earth is um, our temples and our cathedral. Um, so that was a fun one, seeing that from the Native American perspective. And uh, the story went on to capture issues with people sowing crops in Nebraska, where it's a portrait of somebody sowing seed and there's cornfields and it says, fight your insect enemies. Yeah, I love that one. <laughs> Well, anyway, a pleasure. I'm with Paul Seftel. This is an uh, ongoing project, Post Truth. This is the, the book of the show. And uh, the art is beautiful. And uh, thank you. And we shall continue this. Thank you very much, Mark. Right on, man. Cheers.